And for our HO fans, Pico has some great stuff to offer for you. Uh, I would like to start off with our Pico roadbed track. Um, re reliably available. I think it's the best looking roadbed track on the market. It goes together nicely, uh, it comes apart nicely, and can be reconfigured however you want. And it's marvelously flexible. I love to do this. This is very cool. It'll go over any kind of little irregularities on the floor or on the tabletop. I think you'll find if you give that a look, you'll find it to be a great track for you. And other things in Pico HO and InScale, uh, the Pico Smart Control Light digital system. Smart Control Light is very easy to use, has a nice digital display, uh, two and a quarter amps of power, so it's great for almost every um, layout uh, except a really large layout. It can actually be expanded with boosters uh, that are local net enabled. It's a tethered system, but for most layouts, it, it's perfectly fine. And I think that's also worth a, worth a look, uh, and I think you might be pleased with that. What most, most folks are waiting for is uh, uh, some news from Pico about American style trains. Just a moment though, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the Pico Hobby Line HO building kits. These are a bunch of great little kits, no more than $20 each. Uh, you can spend that on, you know, on, on a fast food lunch today. Um, they're a very precise fitting. Uh, they go together. There's no fussing and filing as there is with so many kits. Uh, give, give them a look. I think you'll be pleased. And finally, the thing that people have been waiting for uh, is American rolling stock from Pico in HO scale. And we're starting off with what's called the Sprinter. That's right here in Southern California. It connects with uh, the Amtrak Surfliner and Metrolink and the Coaster Services. And it's a diesel powered uh, commuter rail service. This is the, the how the train looks. This is a typical German paint scheme, but we're making uh, the, some modifications to the tooling with the big air conditioners, much bigger than these that are needed here in Southern California. And our crews have been out doing recordings and photo photographic safaris uh, to make sure we bring you the details of that train. Uh, it's got a lot of cool authentic sounds that you're going to hear. Uh, there will be a, a non-decoder, decoder ready version uh, that's ready for DC. There will also be two road numbers in sound equipped DCC decoder equipped versions and there are also uh, three rail versions for those who want that but most folks are going to go for the sound equipped uh, versions and you'll be very pleased with the decoder. It's fully NMRA compliant. Uh, in fact, when the NMRA uh, reviewed our, our Pico 4.1 smart decoder, uh, they, they even told us they were impressed. They said nobody passes on the first, uh, first go around. This thing passed with flying colors. So it's fully NMRA compatible and has an NMRA compliance warrant. So if you're concerned about those things, if, is it really going to operate on my DCC system? Yes, it will. And it's going to bring you a ton of authentic sounds as well as uh, the lighting features and a great running model. So that's coming uh, late summer for uh, fans of commuter rail service. And I think you'll be interested in that model. And we've also got a ton of interest so far in this little new Whitcomb diesel switcher. It's a 65 ton diesel that was built by Whitcomb in, during World War II. Built in Illinois, shipped over to Europe for use by the U.S. Army Transportation Corps and it was all over Europe. Uh, they served on the first train into Rome, first train into Paris, first train across the Rhine. Uh, so many important historic things and after the war many of them stayed there and were involved in just rebuilding and, and stayed as re reliable good running locomotives. Many of them also came back to America uh, after the war and they were expected to be needed in Asia but that, that was over before they could get them there. So they were sold off to uh, short lines and industrial railroads all over the country. We'll keep you in suspense for now. Right now the, uh, the U.S. Army Transportation Corps version with the authentic European buffers and European couplers, that's what's coming first in late summer. Uh, it'll be in the U.S. Army's basic paint scheme. Uh, but there are plenty of Pico uh, European cars to build an authentic train. So if you're interested in the history or if you're into European trains, that's a great model for you. And other folks can look forward. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on your, your thoughts of what you would like to see. We've been amazed at the people who know about these locos and are, are real fanatics about 
uh, wow, that's just such a cool little loco. Uh, I love it. I want to have one for my railroad, even if I have to, to paint it myself. So give us some info. Let us have the feedback. We'd love to paint one up, uh, maybe in a, in a road that's uh, in of interest to you. But that'll be coming later later this year. Thanks a lot.